Hi everyone, my name is Ariel, and we'll be going over today how to process peripheral blood into PPMCs using Setmate. Setmate is a unique product from Stem Cell Technologies that helps make the process of going from whole blood to PPMCs faster and easier. Now, to be clear, it's not going to um, increase the efficiency of removing the RBCs or the granulocytes sites from whole blood. However, it will make it faster and easier, which can help reduce the variability between technicians. Setmate is a unique product from Stem Cell Technologies that has a plastic insert inside this 50 mil tube. What this insert allows is for density media, such as lymphoprep or FICOL, to be dispensed through the center aperture. And then once it's prepared, you can dispense diluted whole blood through the top. Afterwards, you can take this tube and spin it with, in the centrifuge with the brake on. And what this allows is for you to then pour out your PBMCs. So you can go from whole blood to PBMCs very quickly. To perform a setmate density spin, what you will need is, of course, peripheral whole blood, a setmate tube, density media such as lymphoprep or FICOL, an empty tube in which to dispense your blood and then dilute it with PBS and 2% FBS. You will also need serological pipettes, pipette aids, as well as tips for counting and also some liquid waste as well as a waste bag. The other consideration, which is important, is to make sure that all your reagents are at room temperature and that your centrifuge is also at room temperature. You don't want it to be cold because that will impede the ability of the density spin to happen. So to prepare your setmate tube, what you're gonna wanna first do is to have a pipette, then you open up your setmate tube, and then you want to take out 15 milliliters of your density gradient media, such as FICOL or lymphoprep. And you want to ensure to use the graduations on the side of the serological pipette, not on the side of the setmate tube. And then you will just dispense, place this tip right at the bottom, and then start dispensing. A good tip is that as you are dispensing the density media underneath the insert, you'll see that you only have one or two mils left, so you can physically lift the tip up off the center hole, and that minimizes how much air bubbles will go underneath, okay? What I do want to stress is the importance that you have some density media above the insert, okay? So that's a common um, error that some people might make is that they might dispense just below or at the insert, but you actually want to dispense 15 mils from the graduated pipette. So you purposely want to have about one to two mils above the insert. That is important. So in this case, we're going to be using five milliliters of whole blood. If you were using less than five milliliters, we do have a setmate 15 that can accommodate smaller volumes. And this setmate 50 tube can accommodate start volumes of whole blood from five to 17 mils. So here I'm just going to do a quick little mix before I aspirate. That's five mils. Dispense this into the dilution tube. And then I'm gonna dilute it with PBS and 2% FBS.
here I'm just going to add an equal amount. So to my five mils of whole blood, I'm going to add five mils of PBS and 2% FBS. Okay. So here I'm just going to dispense this whole 10 mil diluted volume into the set mate tube, which has been prepared. And I like to just place the tip here. And, and then in the beginning, you can try doing a slow dispense, but it really shouldn't make too much of a difference. You can see that this is certainly a lot faster than having to do a traditional uh, FICOL non septmate layer. You'll also notice that there will be a little bit of mixing between the dispensed diluted blood and the lympho prep. That's perfectly okay. As well, you might get a little bit of um, the, our, the whole blood going underneath the insert, and that also is okay. A, a good tip to give you is that when you're dispensing, you should keep the tube vertical. This will help minimize how much of the uh, blood can mix in with the um, actual density underneath. Now be aware that you are gonna get a little bit of uh, the whole blood going just slightly underneath the insert, but this is perfectly normal. Now that it's dispensed, all you have to do is cap the tube and do a density centrifugation. In this case, this blood was um, harvested about 24 hours ago, so it will be a 1200 times G spin with the break on for 20 minutes. If the blood was fresher, meaning less time had elapsed since it was drawn, let's say 12 hours or fresher, then you could get away with a 10 minute spin. But typically for older blood samples such as this one, I would recommend doing a 20 minute spin 1200 times G with the break on. So here I have the uh, set mate which we're going to spin. And you'll notice that over time, a little bit of red blood cells will start to pull it down. That's perfectly normal. Um, we're gonna be spinning at 1200 times G, in this case for 20 minutes, because this is 24 hour old blood. And we are going to set the acceleration to nine, the deceleration to nine. If you have a instrument such as this one that you can set the deceleration to eight or seven, you could if you wanted to adjust it to that. However, it's perfectly fine just to have it at the uh, top deceleration setting for when you're working with setmate. Make sure, of course, that your tubes are balanced. And then you're going to want to close the lid and hit start. And it's always good practice just to wait for the, the centrifuge to get up to speed before walking away. There we are, 1200 times G, 20 minutes, break on. Okay, so here it's been 20 minutes and the run has finished. So we're just gonna open this up. And normally best practice is to open these in the biosafety cabinet. So that's what we're gonna do. So here, I'm just gonna open this up and I'm pretty sure this is just the balance that we were using. So we'll set that aside. And here, we have our actual set mate spin. The idea is that when you pour this, what you wanna do with the cap off obviously, is that you want to do this in one smooth, confident motion like this, okay? You don't want to be hesitant because if you're hesitant, when you're going through the diagonal, that's exactly when the layer underneath can come out. So, one smooth motion, wait for one, maybe two seconds, and then back. So you'll notice that after you take your setmate tube out of the uh, spin, that you're gonna have this yellow diluted plasma layer at the top. Then you're gonna have this slightly hazy white layer, which are your desired peripheral blood mononuclear cells. And then just below that, you're gonna have the density media plus your red blood cell and granulocyte pellet at the bottom. Okay, so here you have the tube coming out of the non setmate spin. And you'll notice that at the very top, very similar to your setmate, you're gonna have some diluted plasma, that's the yellow layer. Then you're gonna have this fuzzy white blood, white PBMC layer. 
just below that, you're going to have some density media. And then just at the very bottom, you're going to have your red blood cell granulocyte pellet. Okay, perfect. So here, once you're ready to pour, take off the cap. And then in one smooth motion, you're going to pour and then hold it upside down for one second and then pour back. Done. You'll notice that after you pour, this is what I always like to show, that if you invert the tube completely upside down, it doesn't come out all that much, okay? But if I hold this diagonally, that's exactly when it starts to come out. So that's why you wanna make sure that when you do the pour, that you're confident and quick. You wanna minimize the amount of time that you're holding it diagonally. You wanna do a nice quick inversion. After you've poured out your desired PBMCs, then you're gonna to top up with PBS and 2% FBS to wash. The reason why you want to do a wash is that over time, density media can be a little bit toxic to the cells. So you really wanna get that out of there. And we're just gonna spin this for 300 times G, 10 minutes, break on. So here I just have a balance and I'm gonna be spinning the wash. Typically, we suggest doing 300 times G for eight to 10 minutes. Um, in this case, we can just do it for eight minutes. If you want to do it for a little bit longer, say 10 minutes, that's perfectly fine. So it's gonna close this up. Okay, and then we have 300 times G, eight minutes, acceleration on, deceleration on, start. So here we have, after the first wash, we did ten min we did eight minutes for 300 times G. You can see here that there are a few red blood cells along with your PPMCs, and that is perfectly normal. This is very similar to what you would see with or without the setmate tube. So if you were doing a regular density spin without the setmate insert, you would also see these uh, red banding. So at this point, your options are to either decant by pouring or to uh, simply aspirate out. Most customers, because they're interested in getting through this quickly, what they will do is they will just decant. Just be aware that if you are very recovery oriented, you could uh, elect to just pipette off carefully. Okay. And you'll notice that there'll still be a little bit of liquid here at the bottom. And what you want to do is just gently agitate that to break apart the cell pellet because typically we recommend to do a second wash. Be aware that if you are particularly concerned about platelets, you could do a slow spin. So that would be 120 times G for 10 minutes with a break off. However, what most customers do, unless they're concerned about platelets, is that they will retop up with buffer, which is your PPS plus 2% FPS and re-spin at 300 times G for 10 minutes with the break on. So let me proceed with that. And then we'll finish that last spin. After that last spin is done, then we will do a cell count. So here we have our setmate tube after the second wash. And you can see that it looks very similar to the first wash, but by doing that second wash, you're able to better uh, ensure that you've really removed most of that density media because you don't want that kicking around. Okay, and I just wanted to focus in that that red blood cell pellet or the red cells are still among the pellet. So now, all you have to do is to decant that off. Um, no preference, this is just a simple pour.
and then just agitate it to break up the cell pellet. And normally I would add about half a mil um, to count. Or if you are going to be cryopreserving these, then you would follow your cryopreservation procedure. So we're just looking here how we, after we've agitated the pellet, uh, some of those red blood cells will go back into solution. And so they will give a bit of an orange or pink tinge to the color of the pellet. That's perfectly normal. So here we've taken out the uh, non-set mate spin after 300 times G 10 minutes. And you can see that at least in with this donor, it's very similar to the set mate spin. So there is a little bit of red blood cells among your white blood cell PBMC pellet at the bottom. Okay, so it really talks to how set mate, it just makes your density spinning faster and easier, but it's not supposed to enhance the removal of red blood cells or granulocytes from the PBMC layer. Um, that is more of a biological constraint and consideration that the extent of which will vary depending on the donor to donor variation. The extent of the amount of red blood cells will depend on the donor and also how much time has elapsed since the blood has been drawn from the donor. Okay, so here we've taken our non setmate tube after the second spin. And you'll notice that very similar to the actual setmate that we had done, there is some red blood cells among your white blood cells. So I suspect that once we've removed the supernate and agitated the pellet, that it will, again, look a little bit orange, a little bit pink. Um, as with before, you could do um, a pour off or you could aspirate off. It really depends on your comfort level. If you're going to uh, be worried about recovery, then I would suggest doing a pipette off carefully. We're just gonna decant because that's what most customers like to do. And then you will agitate your cell pellet a little bit just to break it off. Always easier to break apart the pellet when there's minimal volume. You can see very, very similar to our set mate. The color actually looks very similar, I think. If anything, I would say that the non set mate looks a little bit redder. 